Hi, this is Peter from the DJ Podcast. No matter what software program you are using to DJ with, you need to do certain things to prepare your tracks. So in this video, I'll be going over four ways that you can use to prepare your tracks for DJing in Ableton Live. The first thing is to actually rename your tracks. When you bring in a track from Ableton, you'll see that it has the name of the artist and the song, but it doesn't really fit on a particular channel. So even if I drag this out all the way, you'll see that if the title was any longer, it wouldn't be able to fit. One thing that you can do is right click on that track, then click rename, and then give it your own naming scheme. So for example, if you don't really care about the artist, you just want to know the track name, you can get rid of that to save some space, but you can also then use that space to give out more information about the track. So for example, if you want the BPM, you could add that in. And then you could also add in something like the key if you're using the Camelot key system. Then press enter and then you have renamed the track. Now another thing that you can do if you are concerned about harmonic mixing is instead of putting the key information in the title of the track itself, you can right click and then choose one of the colors I know that some DJs prefer to use a color system as opposed to a naming system because they want to put other information into the name. So you can go ahead and color code your tracks depending on what key they're in. And by doing so, you'll be able to quickly see what key the track is just by looking at the color of it. The second thing that you need to do with your tracks is warp them. Warping is really important because it will make sure that all of your tracks, samples, loops, etc are all in time with the master clock, so you don't have to do any manual beat matching. So go check out our other video to learn how to do so. The third thing I want to talk about is the volume. We want to make sure that none of our tracks go above 0 dB, and that's for two reasons. The first is that we don't want any distortion in our audio. The second is that if we take all of the tracks and make them just below 0 dB, we've essentially equalized all of the volumes across all of our tracks. Now it's really easy to adjust the volume of a particular track. So we'll start playing this track here and you'll see that it is playing and it's just at about zero. Maybe we'll go ahead down the track and check to see if it's still there. And we can see that this is fine. If we need to adjust the volume on a particular track or clip, we can use the gain here and just bring it down until we see that it is below zero. You might have to bring it down more or less depending on the particular track that you're playing. The final thing I wanna talk about in this video are follow actions. Now Ableton Live doesn't have cue points that you would find in a program like Serato Scratch Live or Tractor Pro 2. However, you can use follow actions in place of cue points. Follow actions tell Ableton Live to do something after a set amount of time has occurred. Like warping, we have a previous video on this already. So if you want to use follow actions like cue points inside of Ableton Live, go check out that video. Now that you've prepared your tracks for mixing, you can go ahead and start DJing with Ableton Live.